Welcome to Astro Babble. I'm Donna from Donna B Astrology. And I'm Linda from Scullywag Astrology. And we are going to be talking about the new moon in Cancer today, as well as the mansion, as well as the stone. Mm -hmm. And Donna, you're going to tell us about the moon mansion for this new moon? Yes. It will be the ninth moon mansion. This is not a very friendly moon mansion, as I was reading out of the Christopher Warnock's moon mansion book. Um, it's called The Glance of the Lion's Eye, and apparently you don't want to be in that. It has the nature, according to Ptolemy, of Saturn and Mars. So those are the malefic planets. Those typically are not friendly. Um, it warns of approaching misfortune. It's also good for destroying crops and makes those who travel unfortunate. It also instills evil to all men. It causes division and hatred between allies. The only thing it is good for is good for defending yourself. Mm -hmm. Not that that's a guarantee, but and don't take my word for it. But it, it is, uh, it is a uh, gives you inspiration to stand up for yourself. It's a very um, ominous type of moon mansion. So this will be happening for two weeks because that energy lasts throughout the fortnight and till the next lunation. It gives you time to prepare that. Um, you know, don't put yourself into places where you could be attacked. Um, it, it, it just, it, it gives you that kind of, you know, put it in your, in the back of your mind. If things could probably go wrong, they, they very, it's a, it's a higher likelihood that they might. Yeah. Interesting that you said it's of the nature of Mars and Saturn. And we have Mars coming up to oppose Saturn around about the same time or just not very long after this new moon i saw that i saw that i was like oh that's a double um that's why i was i wasn't holding back on this um <laughs> it's time to prepare yourself for maybe <laughs> this uh, lunation happens this is not a good moon mansion yeah and it happens at 24 degrees 56 minutes of cancer so that's where it resides so whenever that moon gets around there it's has the same flavor but for the for this fortnight yeah it's it's really weird. I mean, it's it's ominous. <laughs> <laughs> Spooky. I will be very interested to see because that's sitting on my Jupiter and Jupiter at the time is sitting on my Venus. So we'll see. Also, um, the moon and the sun recently have sextiled Uranus. So maybe things have been shaken up a little bit just uh, prior to this new moon as well. And the lunation is pretty close to, if you're playing horseshoes, is pretty close to that opposition with Pluto. So that also yeah. isn't a, a, a positive aspect because Pluto is meant for change. And a lot of times people are uncomfortable with change. Yeah, exactly. When I was putting the aspects in to um, the event calendar, I noticed a little bit later too, the nodes come up to exactly square Pluto so I saw that and thought oh I was just looking at that it's in medical astrology those nodes are not placed well mm. <laughs> that would be a red flag yeah I, I did hear somebody say in a group that um, the moon nodes and you know being at the bendings it only affects the sun and the moon but I'm not so sure so we'll see but it'd be interesting to see if it does manifest as anything uh, mundanely which just means in the real world or just events rather than looking at it as a natal chart for a person. It's looking at world events. Mm. Well, shall we do the horoscopes? Yeah, lovely thought. I think. <laughs> Move on out of this subject. <laughs> yeah, so just don't make any like huge big plans. It's not really a good moon to yeah and we recommend that you read your ascendant sign or listen to your ascendant sign in the case of if you're listening to this and if you don't understand why we've done a video that explains that but basically when we read for a sign we put that sign on the ascendant so it makes much more sense if you know your ascendant sign to listen to your ascendant sign horoscope yeah all right. So if you are a Cancer rising, 
This is going to be happening in your first house. This is, uh, for all of these, uh, it's, they're all going to be opposing Pluto. So keep that in the back of your mind. You know, this is the first house of, of change. You want to be, this is the house where you're going to start new things for yourself. If you want a haircut, this is a good time to be contemplating or, or making that appointment. This is the time where you're doing things for yourself as far as the, the Cancer moon. And it's your moon, so happy birthday. <laughs> For the cancers and if you are a gemini ascendant this new moon is in your second house the second house is the house of our income and finances personal finances it's our possessions and it's also our resources so there may be new plans new seeds being planted at this time uh, beginnings to do with these topics maybe you know you're starting a new income stream maybe a new budget is in order which actually with that Saturn and uh, Mars opposition coming up Saturn being the stability and doing the budget and uh, Mars Mars is cutting so maybe that would be a productive use for you particularly for Gemini ascendants yeah cutting those expenses looks like expenses at home are going to be cut <laughs> and more work so yeah I, I like that yeah because Saturn and Mars they're not bad they're just um they're not friendly they're not they don't they're, they're not the sweet um you know like Venus they're 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 they make you do the hard the Saturn makes you do the hard work and and Mars is is like Linda said, cutting. It could also be energy. Mm. So try to get those <laughs> in a more positive flow. And if you are a Taurus rising, this new moon is going to be happening in your third house. This is the house of community. It's also the house of um, short-term travel. It's also the house of your siblings, as well as early education. So those thoughts might be starting up. If you don't have your kids yet enrolled in school for the next year, uh, this is going to be a good time to do it. But yeah, it's a, it's a friendly house. It's, it's time to start doing those new things in your community or with a car or, you know, how you train your transportation. Yeah. The moon has her joy in the third house too. So that's another nice thing for um, Taurus ascendants. It might be a difficult yes. moon mansion, but it's new beginnings and the moon likes being in the third. This is where she enjoys being. So that is a nice thought. <laughs> and if you are an Aries ascendant, this new moon is in your fourth house. The fourth house is our home, our parents, family, heritage, real estate matters. So this may have nothing to do with you. It may concern your parents. Maybe there's new plans afoot there. Maybe new beginnings of some sort for your parents. It could be new beginnings to do with where you live, who you live with, or real estate matters. So new beginnings, new plans to do with those matters. Very nice. And if you are a Pisces rising, this is going to be happening in your fifth house and the fifth house is your 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 creative house it's what you create so it could be children it could also be hobbies um gatherings venues of events like sports events and stuff like that so if you are um a pisces rising you might be starting things of the fun the fun side of life so yeah. this will be a good time to, to start that and if you are an aquarius rising this new moon is happening in your sixth house the sixth house is its work, its illness, its pets. It's also service to others. So this could be new beginnings, new seeds being planted to do with maybe a career where you will be serving others. That could be doctors, nurses, first responders. It may have to do with employees or people that work for you. This could be somebody just, you know, Maybe there's a new contractor coming in to do something uh, for you around the house, or it could be an employee or somebody that you have some authority over in the workplace. And it's also the day-to-day -day kind of stuff that just needs to be done. It's opposing Pluto or it's coming up to oppose Pluto. 
there could be issues to do with power dynamics, maybe regarding the workplace, or this could relate to pets. And if you are a Capricorn rising, this is going to be happening in your seventh house. This will be um, indicative of new things that are happening uh, with your partner or uh, someone who you have a committed relationship with. This is the one-on-one -on -one relationship. So these new things will be starting with partners and it could be business. It could be romantic partners, but these will be new things if you are a Capricorn rising. If you are a Sagittarius Ascendant, this new moon is happening in your eighth house. The eighth house is shared finances and resources or other people's money. This could include things like taxes, inheritances, loans, debts, joint financial ventures. It could incorporate lots of things. So it's also the partner's money because it's the second house from the seventh and the seventh is other people, which is where other people's money comes from. So yeah, there could be something as simple as a new agreement being made. Maybe you're going in with a partner, whether that's a business partner or a romantic partner, maybe you're joining uh, finances together, or maybe you're actually separating. And this is when some sort of um, agreement is started on how you're going to actually separate those joint finances. But new beginnings, new starts, seeds being planted. Actually, just thinking about that moon mansion you were talking about, maybe not a positive moon mansion for something like that to be happening under. Yeah. And if you are a Scorpio rising, this new moon is going to be happening in your ninth house. This is the house of spirituality. It's also the house of um, publishing, uh, legal issues, uh, higher education. And this is uh, in the ninth house. So this would be those new things that you'll be starting around those themes. Very nice. If you are a Libra ascendant, this new moon is happening in your 10th house. The 10th house is career and public reputation. It's honors and rewards. It's also fame, but also infamy. So for whatever reason, there's new beginnings, seeds being planted that may have to do with a career. So maybe you're starting a new job. It's also the house of authorities. So this could be a new boss. Could be that you're starting out on something that will bring you some reward or recognition further down the track. Very nice. And if you are a Virgo rising, this is going to be happening in your 11th house of hopes and dreams. This is the house where you could be starting. It's also the house of the groups and the people that you associate with. So if you are associating or wanting to start a group, this is a great aspect for that. It's it's you, You're starting things with the groups that you are associated with. And you have Mars in your first house, so that'll give you the drive. And if you are a Leo ascendant, this new moon is happening in your 12th house. The 12th house is the house of our undoing. It also encompasses things like exile, being far away from home. Yeah, so it is a difficult house. Also a place of rest and retreat, places of confinement. This can be places like hospitals, prisons, or as I said, retreat. It could be a monastery or just, you know, somewhere where you go away and lock yourself away and work on something. It's working behind the scenes. So there may be new beginnings to do with this. Maybe you're going to take yourself out of circulation or the social world so you can work on something maybe there's a enforced separation from others or from what you usually do because it needs to be done or maybe it's something that happens to you like you're sick so you need to recuperate and you can't do all the things that you would like to do interesting that we've got that Saturn Mars opposition and as Donna was talking earlier with the moon mansion it's very much of the nature of Mars and Saturn and there's that Saturn having to do something and Mars yeah Mars just wants to move forward but yeah so this may be a difficult moon mansion a difficult couple of weeks but you know there's other things coming up and 
yeah, just this isn't a, a awfully cheery new moon, unfortunately. I would think that it might be a little frustrating, you know, because that, you know, Mars is, is wants you to drive forward and, and Saturn's oh, holding yeah. you back. And mm. I would think that's a lot of, it could be frustrating. So just mm. breathe. Yeah. <laughs> and for Leo Ascendants, this is, Mars is in the second house of personal finances. Saturn's in the eighth house of shared finances and resources. So and Saturn's retrograde, so it's going back over old ground. So it could be that issues related to my money versus our money kind of are also aggravating the situation where you want to retreat or the self undoing or yeah, exile. It's just those are likely to be tied in with that somehow. Yeah, I was just noticing all the planets are peregrine except the moon and Saturn. So the moon and Saturn are the only ones that feel like they have any say in what's going on. So, mm. But the moon's it's out just... of bounds <laughs> and Saturn's retrograde. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, there's the planets are, are taking a, a, a breather for our advancement, I think. Yeah, when a planet's peregrine, it just means that it has no essential dignity. Mm -hmm. Can be a little bit like a stranger in a strange land. It kind of doesn't have the assistance. It's resources. Mm, it doesn't have the assistance it might have if it was had some sort of essential dignity. So it can feel like all these planets, they're all just trying to get by as best they can. Yeah. So, Donna, what what gem or crystal have you got that will help us with this moon mansion and this, this moon this is a good crystal it helps with um cleaning out clearing out um your spirituality and this is called blue calcite it's a really deep deep blue it's very shiny and like the uh calcites usually have that i call it a buttery um texture to them they feel uh like they're there's oil on them there's they're very smooth and they're very soft um and that's exactly the energy that this has this hopefully will um give you some aid and 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 an ally to kind of reduce the stress this is a, a stress reducer this also is good for art so i was talking about one of the um where the moon is in the fifth so who was that i can't remember but this would be a good ally to um you know start those hobbies so i think it was as constant. as well as the as as if the, as if the if the moon the new moon is in the ninth house it and that spirituality because that's this is the stone it's good for the third eye as well as the throat um it's a it's a it's a easy energy it's a soft energy but it it's very um it does have a most hardness of three so it's it, it i have seen it in jewelry it, but it it comes in a um it come it can either be grown in like masses or it can be a, a rhombohedral um type of structure so that's how you will find it and it's it's really everywhere uh the deepest blues though do come from south africa Fair that's a pretty deep blue there so that is blue calcite and it's a very gentle soft stone um i like it it's it, it's it's one of those that i keep uh, with with me in my in my layout kit because who doesn't need soft energy and just that that gentle coaxing to you know get your um creative flow go going as well as connection with the spiritual realm so this is a great stone for that and this very well might be what we're doing <laughs> yeah no um i think from what we've seen so far i think we could possibly use that so yeah well, it's a very nice aspects. 
So the first aspect that we have is going to be the sun trining Neptune. And this is exactly what I was speaking to. The, the, the sun is asking you to, to be spiritual, um, to be sensitive, to avoid, well, try to avoid tensions. The aspect is asking you to, to draw out on those spiritual things, especially with uh, Neptune being in Pisces. Hmm. Yeah, this can be quite altruistic, idealistic. It is a trine, so hopefully it will be quite positive or at least not harsh. When I was putting the aspects together into the event thing, it kind of made me think that almost like this might be the potential to kick off some of the other aspects in that uh, there's some pretty harsh ones after this, and I think this might be... I just worry kind of almost like a little bit of Pollyanna-ish thinking here. And and then there's the, um, I don't know, coming back down to earth with a thud. And um, yeah, I mean, we have that Mars, Saturn coming up more or less. It, I think it's not long afterwards too. So that's also happening at the same time. So we've got... Yeah. Mars and Saturn kind of, you know, opposing each other. And, you know, it's just like the sun's just got its fingers in its ears going, la, 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 la. You know, I'm not listening. Mm. You know, Venus is soon to station retrograde. Mercury's gotten away from the sun, so it is out from under the beam. So that's something. Yeah, that sun's coming up to oppose Pluto. Yeah. It, this is either a little bit of, not the calm before the storm, but like a little bit of respite before you dive into some of the heavier, more challenging aspects, I think, coming up. This might be a good time to, to uh, shore up your spirituality, to find out where your sensitivities lie, you know, what you're sensitive to and what you're not, so that you can be more aware of the surroundings that you're going to be walking into later on in the next two weeks. Mm, that's a point yeah use that use that that neptune and the sun to you know do some meditation figure out where you are find out where your center is you know get strong mm, mm. but use the neptune and the sun that aspect it's a great aspect for that speaking of which here comes mars to oppose retrograde saturn this is the same day as the sun trine neptune yeah, this is stop, go, stop, go. You know, Mars just wants to power forward. Saturn not only, you know, generally wants to restrict things and say no, it's it's going back over old ground to make sure that, you know, well, have we enforced enough rules? Mars isn't going to be happy about this, but, you know, what's he going to do? Yeah, so, yeah, very frustrating time. Holy smokes, now the moon's not even, doesn't even have essential dignity. We're just relying on, on, on Saturn here on, right now. Um, but yeah, that Saturn and Mars opposition is, it's, you're going to, you're going to feel irritable, you know, take steps to mitigate that quick response that would get you into trouble later, because this is, you know, the, like Linda had said, that push pull or the drive and the, the, and the hold back, it's going to be frustrating, I would think you know, for a lot of people, but if you have, you know, a project that needs to have that hard work, that needs to have that, those, those barriers and those boundaries, and, you know, you have that Mars to drive. For those lucky enough to have been good to the planets, <laughs> maybe they might uh, be productive in a positive way. So, but do be on guard for being irritable and, and having that tension and that frustration. That is also, you know, Definitely in, in the pot as well. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about earlier. The nodes are going to be um, square Pluto at this time. So I do wonder too if for some people it might be almost flipped. We're talking about Mars just wants to go forward and Saturn is holding it back and wanting to go back over old ground. But also it could be a case of almost like depression overcoming your ability to act in that there may not be anything really stopping you, but 
it's just that Saturn and yeah, the, the positive spins to these planets are 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 shortcoming for sure. They're not. They're not. Uh, <laughs> there's not a lot of them. Well, these are the malefics, and you know they're in opposition. Plus, Saturn is retrograde, so that doesn't help. And then the next not so friendly aspect is going to be Pluto. <laughs> yeah, the next day, Sun opposition Pluto. It's an ominous type of aspect, but maybe the sun's asking you to go deep into, you know, why things work or it's a, it's a chance to go into the depths of whatever problem you are facing. This might be what you need in order to move on. Hmm. Yeah. This could involve power plays. Yeah. This could be feeling a little bit out of control and whether that means that, you know, and it'll depend which houses it's occupying to where Capricorn and Cancer are in your chart. But this could be like feeling out of control, whether that's like you're doing too much of this, that or whatever, or just like that you have no autonomy over your own life, feeling like you're at the whim of fate and other people. You know, that's pretty disempowering. It's not very uh, nice position to feel in. Yeah, this... The sun moves quickly, so it is going to clear it. You, you may feel this for a few days, but this is a tense couple of days. You know, we've got that Mars-Saturn opposition going on at the same time as this sun-Pluto. It's just, it's challenging. Just keep moving. As well, this is the time for that, when I was describing that moon mansion, to make sure you're not putting yourself in a dangerous place where people around you could do and play those power struggles or those the power plays against you so make sure that you are you know you keep yourself physically safe this is the this is the aspect this is you know this is for everybody if you are susceptible if you have other things in your natal chart where these planets will be hitting you know whether they're a square to it or you know, it, it, make sure you're not putting yourself in, in power in places where you could be overcome by uh, power plays, power struggles. Yeah. And I mean, the sun has only moved a couple, what, two degrees away from um, that trying to Neptune, which, you know, that can be nice and, you know, idealistic and spiritual and all that. But, you know, it can be like, what am I not seeing? you know don't be you know you could be hoodwinked it doesn't even like having your savings stolen is you know not good either it doesn't have to be physical danger it could also be um deception deceit that sort of thing as well even though the sun trine neptune we hear trine we think easy or good aspect particularly when uh, these aspects come from the outer planets uranus neptune and pluto they can be you know just makes it easier for them to do what they want yeah yeah and with the pluto closely sextiling neptune you might not see what is dangerous you might not see that mm. you know things could not be uh on the up and up so be watchful now you've been warned because <laughs> that is that is the per that is the purpose of this mansion it is to give you advance warning you know a, a heads up to to let you know that things could go south or sideways quickly and, and to to be on guard for it yeah and that doesn't mean that everybody's going to have you know all these horrible things happen but particularly if these are kind of touching on natal planets in your chart looking at the houses that are involved that will give you a lot of clues about you know where these dynamics might be playing out so it might not be as dramatic as we're talking about i mean we're trying to read for lots of people you know in a very general overview type thing but you know this is the type of energy whether that's intense or kind of quite low key will depend on your chart very well put. Yeah, we don't want to say that everybody's going to get attacked, but that <laughs> could happen to, I mean, if you were the one person who was attacked, I would, I'd want to know about it, you know, so mm. that's, yeah. that's that's the whole purpose of trying to describe the, the, the gamut of what could happen. 
that's kind of what we're trying to do. <laughs> we're trying to put the, the, you know, this, this bad thing could happen, but it also could be a positive thing. So anyways, moving on. Um, Venus is going to station retrograde. <laughs> We've been looking forward to this. We've been talking about it. Yeah. And uh, we did do a video about it. It's half edited. By the time this video comes out, hopefully it will be available. And if it is, I will put a link to it in the description right about here. Venus retrograde only happens about once every 18 months and lasts for about 40 days. We've been in the shadow period of it since the 19th of June. The shadow period will extend to the 7th of October. But this is when the actual planet Venus uh, stations. So she'll be retrograde from the 22nd of July to the 3rd of September. She's going to retrograde all the way back to 12 Leo. And a which... Venus retrograde is, you know, all about the, the themes that revolve around a retrograde is, is readdressing old issues. So this could be with Venus, it could be um, old romantic partners. Uh, it could also be like, you know, I want to redo the living room or, you know, redo something that is beautification project around your house. So these might all be what you are revisiting with Venus in retrograde. And you've got some time because it's from, like Linda said, July 22nd to uh, September 3rd. That's when it's going to be in retrograde. And when we talk about relationships, not just romantic relationships, this is relationships in general, our values also, because Venus is about values. And with Venus, the way that Venus does retrograde every eight years, it comes back to a very similar position, not exactly the same degree, it kind of moves a couple of degrees each time. But yeah, so there may be themes from what was happening about eight years ago. So if you think back eight years or 16 or 24, there may be themes that kind of like, oh, that again <laughs> might not be exactly the same, but the same sort of topic might arise. And, you know, maybe this time you're reassessing, well, I've always done it this way. Maybe I should approach it that way. That's what Venus is doing. She's reassessing how she deals with those issues, you know, relationships, harmony, art, beauty, all those sorts of things. So that's going to take up quite a lot of weeks that Venus is going to be in this sign than we are used to. Usually she goes right through a sign in about a month or so, month or two. Yeah, about uh, yeah, about 24 days, I think. Yeah, say a month. Depends how fast she's moving and all that, and how close to the sun she is. Yeah. Yeah, so what is she going to so, be, Leo, for June, July, August, September? Yeah, almost four months. That's a long time. Because it is. You know, she... She doesn't retrograde until she gets almost all the way out. She gets to 28 degrees. You know, there's only 30 degrees to a sign. So she gets almost all the way to 28, and then she kind of goes, oh, I've got to go back to 12 Leo. And then, you know, when she does station direct again, then she's got to catch up to where she was. So, you know, she's a long time. Sometimes, you know, when planets retrograde, they can kind of cross into a, a different uh, sign. but this is all happening in Leo. So wherever Leo is in your chart, you know, that's where you can expect that these sorts of issues may be looked at. And it may have something to do with where Taurus and Libra are in your chart as well. There may be some tie in with that. Very nice. I'm kind of looking forward to it. You know, it, it, this is, and and it, what what is interesting to me about this is with, um, as you had said, Venus is going to be and and do her entire retrograde uh, movement in one sign. She is the counterpart to the uh, um, astrological couple, uh, Mars, who also did a retrograde period in the same sign. So it's interesting to me. Mm, yeah. They're staying in the same signs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like they're highlighting, you know, these issues, uh, Gemini and Leo. 
Yeah, yeah, Gemini. That was two. Where, um, it's where Mars retrograded, yeah. yeah. Hmm. That's what I, that's just interesting because usually the planets they don't I mean they go over uh boundaries of the of the signs. So well yeah, it just depends how far they are in or out. Yeah, Venus and Mars, they look like they were gonna catch up a little while ago, but Venus has been slowing down because she's going to retrograde. She's been getting slower and slower. Whereas Mars is just powering on. So they're not going to um, make that conjunction that, you know, was building for a little while. Interesting setup for sure. And then we have the sun entering Leo on the 22nd. I think this is not long after Venus stations retrograde. Yeah, like 20 minutes later or something. This is where um, Leo likes it. Leo uh, rules this sign. So Leo is going to be... Uh, very happy to be here. Leo likes to shine. So that is one thing. You know, it's wanting to be the center of attention. It's it's wanting to, you know, say, look at me. I I am the one who's uh, got the direction that we need to go. That, that's what Leo likes to do. Yeah. I was just looking, like you said, Leo's ruled by the sun. So that's helpful for both Mercury and Venus that are in Leo at the moment. And Venus is going to be in Leo for quite a while. So it's helpful to have the sun there. It's just looking, we've also got Jupiter in Taurus, which makes a square to Leo. But I mean, it is Jupiter. So hopefully not too bad, maybe. And I mean, by degree, it's not you know, Venus is at 28, Jupiter is at 12. Interesting, though, that Venus is going to retrograde back to 12, Leo, which will square where Jupiter is now, but maybe I'm just going a bit too far with that. Nice that both Saturn and Mars are in aversion to Leo. So Mars and Saturn technically shouldn't be able to harm those planets in Leo. So this might actually be helpful for this Venus retrograde, at least we don't have the malefics messing with it. So that is that is the a, a saving grace there. Mm. Interesting too, because I can't remember when it actually happened, but when we had our Venus Kazemi a few months back, Venus overtook the sun. Now Venus has slowed down. She's stationing retrograde. Now the sun is coming up to catch up with her. And they will have their Kazemi, their inferior conjunction, and the sun will move on and all the rest of it. But yeah, wherever the sun is in your chart, that's kind of where a focus or a light's being shone. So wherever Leo is in your chart, people and topics associated with that house are likely to be more prominent for the next month or so. I'm kind of looking forward to that. And make sure you journal. Whenever a planet goes into a new sign, it's a good time to journal as well. And the next aspect we have is Mercury is going to square Uranus. And that is obviously changing, surprising. It could be uh, revolutionary. It could be you know, a new way to do things. That's what that's what this is. So if you are have been struggling with, you know, one part of your life, this might offer a, a new a new way to address it. Yeah. This is tension, though. It's, you know, ideas, thoughts, communication with, you know, squaring off against Uranus, which is, like Donna said, the unusual, the innovative, the avant-garde. Uh, I see this and I just think jangled nerves, even if there's no huge shocking thing, because, I mean, this is a transit, you know, Mercury's, Mercury's still moving pretty quick, 159% of its usual speed. It's out from under the beams of the sun, so that's good. But, yeah, just sometimes, you know, so much is going on. It can be just, just feel frazzled. This could be just a lot of communications. But it's also, you know, maybe you're hearing ideas you don't feel comfortable with or you're trying to promote something new and innovative or just a little bit different and you're meeting resistance to it. It's just... You know, it, it's not smooth. It's it's tension and it's conflict. It's just, eh. 
I was thinking your plans are probably going to change. So have that in your have that in your back pocket that that's that's a, a very good possibility is whatever you're planning on might have a different uh, outcome. Yeah. And then the next aspect is Mercury is going to conjunct retro Venus. This is art appreciation. This would give you insight to the the Venusian things. This is probably the one of the nicer aspects that we have other than the the sun trying Neptune. I like this one. Yeah, I think this does have a little bit of potential for mix-ups and confusion, though. I mean, Venus is retrograde. I think when a planet's retrograde, it does kind of throw things into a little bit of a tailspin. I just kind of think, you know, communications, thinking, you know, maybe you've always been able to talk your partner or friends or whoever around to your way of thinking. And with Venus retrograde, they're thinking, well, no, I, I don't want to go along with that. Or no, I don't like that anymore. Or I just think there's not necessarily that it will be all bad or anything. You know, if these were both direct, I'd say, you know, charming talk, you know, flirty talk. But with Venus retrograde, I think we're reevaluating literally how we relate to others, harmony, beauty, art, all those sorts of things. I just think maybe things might not go as smoothly as you think. You might think, you know, oh, I'll just lay on some charm and sweet talk my way in and and it doesn't work, you know. That's a possibility. So well, as long as Venus is in retrograde, any planet that she is in contact with could get a reevaluation flavor to it. Ah, this is what I noticed before too. Uh, the moon will have, um, at the time that uh, Mercury and retrograde Venus are exact, the conjunction, the moon will have not long passed in opposition to Uranus. So that also kind of gives me a feeling of like, you know, moon's emotions uranus is kind of unexpected shocking it's kind of like well what <laughs> you know it's i just think the unexpected yeah i just think relationships emotions people aren't going to react the way you expected you know and, and it could even be just you're interested in different you know, you go to an art show or a concert or something because you think, oh, I love this artist. And and you're kind of like, oh, no. You might actually be quite revolted by them, you know. It's, you know, which would be shocking. I mean, you know, can you imagine? You think, oh, my God, I'm going to go see this artist and it's going to be fantastic. And then not only is it just, like, not fantastic, it's not even average. It's just kind of like, oh, my God, I, I hate it, you know, just... And the moon will be in Scorpio at the time, which is where it's in fall. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And I mean, you know, the moon moves pretty quickly, but, you know, in the lead up to and away from that uh, exact conjunction of Mercury and retrograde Venus, you know, the moon's, yeah, pretty much in Scorpio and messing with uh, opposing Uranus, so... I just think, and by the next day, the moon. Thank goodness, the moon moves quickly, mm -hmm. and that's the that's the blessing of the moon. Is things could look really hard on one day, and it, just give it a give it a, a moment. I think that's what the moon mansion is trying to tell you: is take a breath. The moon the moon moves fast, mm -hmm. so that you are not under, you know, torment for 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 a, a long time it, it does move fast so that's the that's the beauty of the aspects with the when, when the moon is involved yeah just sometimes the moon can kind of trigger things so yeah because like the moon will move on to square that uh mercury retrograde venus conjunction as well so i just think mm, emotional responses in general are going to be a little bit erratic yeah and the mansion happened in the um, sign of of Cancer, so that is that is 
the moon is going to play more importance you know, mm. this month because the lunation happened in cancer. Mm. So it's going to, the moon is going to be a little bit more prominent. Your emotions are going to be a little bit more prominent for these next, uh, for this next fortnight, which is about two weeks mm. because that moon, that lunation happened in, in cancer, the sun and the moon will both be more uh, prominent in their actions and, and what, and what happens and for the next two weeks. So. Mm-hmm. that's why <laughs> and then we have mercury entering virgo on the 28th so mercury will be in one of its homes again it'll be domicile virgo is ruled by mercury so mercury is at home here uh it's unfortunate that mars is already in his house so <laughs> he's gonna have to deal with that mercury does well here like i said it's a little bit unfortunate that it's going to have that conjunction with Mars. It's got Mars in its house. It's also got uh, Saturn coming up opposite it to it and moving towards that opposition. They're both moving towards each other because Saturn's retrograde. But yeah, thinking, communications, learning, talking to do with wherever Virgo is in your natal chart and the topics and people associated with that house. Yeah. And Mercury will have a lot an easier time expressing itself. It's in its own terms. It's in its own house. It's in its own sign of exaltation because it's exalted and um, has rulership in Virgo. So that's oh, really yeah. nice for 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 Mercury, mm. who now has the essential dignities of eleven and not Peregrine anymore. So it it is going to be strong. Your voice is going to have a little bit more strength to it. I guess be sure because it is co-present with Mars and uh, opposing Saturn, you know, watch that, that pull push the kind of, you know, the, um, the drive and hold back kind of energy. That's also going to be flavoring the Mercury. Yeah. Yeah. Once it gets past uh, its conjunction with Mars, things will improve. I imagine. And then we have a sneak peek at the full moon in Aquarius. So Saturn is the ruler of this full moon coming up on the 1st of August. Oh, Saturn's in Pisces. Mm. What we call an inner version, so it can't see it to assist this full moon. Jupiter is kind of squaring it. So, I mean, it's four degrees away, but. That'll be nice. Hmm. Well, it's got to be better than this new moon. <laughs> well, we'll deal with that when we get there. And Donna, Very where nice. can people find you? Uh, you can find me at com, and that's my website and my contact information is there. Uh, feel free to reach out if you are interested in a natal reading a year ahead reading as well as I do horary and um I'm starting to do medical a little bit and um I also work with crystals and do layouts and I can do those um from a distance so and they have been helpful to people mm-hmm. and Linda where can people get a hold of you and what are you up to I'm at Scullywag Astrology. That's astrology.scullywag.com. I do natal readings, relationship readings, and year ahead readings. Very nice. Mm. Very nice. So thank you for listening. And uh, please like, share, comment. We love your comments. Uh, If you're listening on podcasts, we'd really appreciate it if you rated us um yeah hope the new moon is not too traumatic for you all yeah i think it's going to be a tense few weeks but definitely get throughable we've we've done this before we've had these kind of aspects before it just just means we need to have a little bit more focus a little bit more grounded uh, groundedness um prepared yeah. Mm -hmm. find your center (laughs) okay thank you for listening bye bye